Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about Power BI Desktop and how you can import data into it. So if you don't already have Power BI Desktop, you can download it. Just do a Google search for Power BI Desktop. You should find a link on Microsoft's website for the free download. And so once you've got this open, you'll probably see a page like this where it prompts you to add data to your report. Once you've added data, then you can start creating these different visualizations on here. So there's a number of different ways they can import data here. Some of the more common ones you can import from an Excel file, from an SQL server. You can even paste data into a blank table and it even has a sample data set you can use. So I'm gonna start with an Excel workbook. So if I click on this link here and select the workbook that I already have and click on open, if you've used uh, Microsoft's Power Query, then the process is identical. And so it's gonna load, load this in here. It's gonna show you any tables or sheets that it's found. And if I click on it, you know, I can just hit the load button and it'll load this directly into Power BI Desktop, or I can hit the transform data button first if I wanna edit it before lo loading it in here. I'll show you why it later why, why it's useful to potentially transform your data before loading it in here. Right now, looking at the preview, everything looks fine. My columns are, are set up properly, all the headers are fine. I'm gonna hit load, and now it's gonna put this into Power BI. And so unlike with Power Query in Excel, it's not gonna show your data in here. Instead, this is gonna be left for the visualizations. Off to the right, you'll see I've got this table. So let's say I want to rename this. I'll right click, rename, and we'll just call it book one. And so it's just a bit easier to, to name it because now, you know, if I use more than one data set, if I load the data from different sources, it, it's an easy way to stay organized. If I click on this arrow here to open this up, I'll, I'll see all the fields that are in this data set. So I've got date, and you can see it's got a date indicator to tell you uh, what type of field it is price, quantity, so those are numerical values. You know, state and store, those are text values. There's nothing in here. So you can quickly see what, what your data set looks like. So if you don't need to see it, close it back up. If you decide you don't need it, you click on this button for more options. You can refresh the data. You can edit your query. If you decide, oh, I probably need to do a transformation. I need to edit something. You can delete it from your model, rename it, hide it. So a lot of different options here to manage your uh, different data. So now, if I click back on the Home tab, if I go back here, there's an option to enter data from, as you see, a workbook, SQL Server. You can even enter data. You might be wondering why you'd want to do this, because this looks like a manual process, right? You create a table. And so this can be useful if, let's say, you're working on an Excel spreadsheet, so I'm working on another one right now, and you want to copy and paste it into here. So just copy it from your clipboard. So right now, I've, I've clicked Copy, on a different worksheet I'm at. I'm gonna click this, this first cell here and hit Control V. And as you can see, now it's automatically loaded my data into here, so I can just load it in here. So instead of you know potentially saving the file that I'm working on, having to find it, and then loading it in through those steps, I can just copy and paste it right into here and then you know load it or edit it beforehand. So I'm gonna hit cancel, but that's how you know, you can just, if you just quickly want to paste something in here into your data set without necessarily going through the whole process of finding the file, saving it, and, and that sort of thing, that's a quick way you can do it, just to click the enter data button, and obviously you can manually enter it if you wanted to, but if you've got something saved on your clipboard from another file, paste it in here, that's an easy way to do that. Now, if I click on this get data button and click on more down here, you'll see that there are a ton of different ways you can import data into Power Query. So if your company has access to any of these different data sources, you know you can click them and import your data into there. You can even do a search, obviously, because there's a lot of different sources. Let's say I want, want to copy data from a website. Type in web. Select the web option, hit connect. And just like Power Query, you know, we enter in the link uh, where we want to where we want the to pull data from, and it can load it. Uh, for us that way. One example that I'm going to use in this case is data from the TSA website. So it's got passenger volumes by year. So this could be something that you know might be useful to, to plot on an Excel chart. So I'm going to hit 
Control C to copy that link. And now I'll just paste it into here. Control V. I'm going to hit OK. And now, you know, just like Power Query, it's going to connect and it's going to look for the tables. And so once it once it loads a preview on here, again I'll go through the same process and select what I what I want to pull in. So it detects table one. Right? Now I'm going to show you the problem with potentially loading this into Power Query. So if I click on this and just click load, the problem, if you if you don't see it, is that at the top here, it hasn't recognized my headers. It's just using a generic column one, column two, column three, column four. So this is not going to be really helpful because if I load this into Power BI on the side here, I'm going to see column one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not going to know what field each one of those columns relate relates to. So this is important. So if you see this in your preview, before you click on the load button, you may want to click on transform data first, just because it'll save you um, the process of having to go back here and, and fixing it afterward, because inevitably you'll have to do that, just because otherwise you, you know, you're know going to need to re memorize the, the column numbers. right? So it's a quick, easy step that you need to do, and all it is is clicking this button to say, use the first row as headers. So it's going to take this first row and basically pump it into that first first row as, as the header. So if I click on that, does that step for me, and that fixes the issue of my headers not being not being recognized properly. So now that was just the only change I need to do. You can see it saved that option to promote the headers. That's that step here, and it redetected the the type and now I can hit close and apply. Once I do that, now it'll resume the process of loading this back into Power BI. And so now when it's loaded in here, it'll be a lot easier to see the data and the different fields. So if I open this up, now I see the years clearly. Otherwise, it would have been column one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And again, I'll right click, rename to call this TSA. And now it's saved in here. And now my data set is nicely organized, easy to see. Because the, the key thing when you're doing any sort of data analysis, whether it's Power BI or anywhere else, you want to make it easy to know what your data is and make sure you're, you're loading it in properly as opposed to you know creating your visuals and then going back and figuring out, okay, what was that column related to? What was... What was that one supposed to be? And then having to go back and edit it. Now you could go back and edit um, something after you've loaded it. If you click on these three dots, there's an option to edit the query. So if I go back into the here, I'll go back into the Power Query Editor. And now I can go back and make these changes. So I'm back in that process where you can, you know, I can add and, and, and change steps if I needed to. So it's not too late if you load the data and you forgot to transform it. You can still go back in here to to make changes and edit it because with Power Query it's going to save all of your steps and then you can still go back to close and apply once you're done. So it's not too late. You don't have to worry about if you made a mistake that you can't go back and and that you'll have to go through the whole process again. You can just go back, click on the more options button and edit your query in there. And then you've got it all nicely organized, loaded in. So every time you refresh that data, Power Query is going to go through those steps and apply them, and so you're not going to have to worry about, you know, next time you go to refresh, it's going to forget those changes that you made. With Power Query, it's effectively sort of like a macro recorder where it's recording your steps along the way, and it, every time it refreshes, it's going to execute them one by one. So including changing the data type, including promoting the headers, it's going to go through those steps over and over again. So that's a quick overview of how to import data into Power BI. Obviously a different data set or a different data source is going to require different inputs. And so if you use SQL or if you've got data from Salesforce, whatever the case may be, you're obviously going to need your own uh, specific login and details of how to connect to it. But with Power BI, you can pull in all those different sources in here and you know have, have a complex data model built in through those sources and you create different visualizations. So that's the really cool thing about Power BI. It makes it easy to connect 
all these different data sources. Well, not necessarily connect them, but put them all on one um, one visualization that you can see and pop, potentially collect, connect them. But at the very least, you can still have different charts in here from different data sources that are populated. So if you like this video, please leave a like and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos on Power BI and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.